cabinet, you understand that there was an offer. Government offered to govern. There was a consideration. The citizens considered how they were going to be governed. And government promised that they would govern by constitution. And there was an agreement. The citizens agreed that if government promised there would be a government by constitution, that they would agree to allow the constitution to into force. Now, there's a unique situation here. It's very rare when you find the party of the first part, which is the congressmen, officers of the government, who are also parties of the second part, as representatives of we the people, the republic. And when they signed the document, they signed the document as officers of government, agreeing to the constitution, and simultaneously as officers of representatives of the people in the republican form of government. And when they signed that document, that constituted a ironclad contract in writing enforceable in a court of law pursuant to the statute of frauds. Here in the state of Michigan, that's 566.132 Michigan Compiled Laws Act, which basically states anything in writing is enforceable in the court of law pursuant to the statute of frauds. Now, all we're asking is that they enforce the contract. We want them to enforce the contract. In other words, if we read something in here, and we got a good reason for why we believe it's the way it is, then they should honor that. And they should honor it in favor of you, the clearly intended and expressly designated beneficiary. But I'll get into that a little later. The program that you should understand, especially, is Article 6, Paragraph 2 of the Constitution. This is called the Supremacy Clause of the Constitution. It's located at Article 6. Everybody see that? Paragraph 2, which is going to start right here, and I'm going to read it to you. Okay? And basically what it says is this, this Constitution and the laws of the United States, which shall be made in pursuance thereof, and the treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States, shall be the supreme law of the land, and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby anything in the Constitution or laws of any state to the contrary or notwithstanding. And when they say notwithstanding, that means notwithstanding in law. That means that's a legal definition. Notwithstanding means notwithstanding in law. Now, a very important case, Marbury versus Madison, 5 U.S. 137. Pardon my reaching here. Marbury versus Madison, 5 U.S. 137. It's recorded at volume 5, right here. It's an 1803 case, Marbury versus Madison. It's recorded in volume 5, page 137. Now, basically what this case states, and, and I'm telling you right now, if you want to use a case to cite for any purpose in court, you have to read the case. If you haven't read the case, you haven't read the case and formed a basis upon which a logical determination in your mind could have been reached to form an opinion as to why you should do what you're going to do, then the judge will throw your case out. So read your cases. Don't just quote cases because that won't, you won't win. If the judge ever pins you down and starts asking you some merits of the case and you can't even understand what the case is about, nine times out of ten he's just going to throw your case in, in, the, in the can. So make sure you read the case. This is one of the leading cases in the history of the United States of America. The opinion of the court was given by the Honorable Judge John Marshall, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. His opinion was anything that is in conflict is null and void of law. Clearly, he said, that for a secondary law to come in conflict with the supreme law was illogical. For certainly the supreme law would prevail over all other law. And certainly our forefathers had intended that the supreme law would be the basis of all law. And for any law to come in conflict would be null and void of law. It would bear no power to enforce. It would bear no obligation to obey. It would purport to settle as if it never existed. For unconstitutionality would date from the enactment of such a law, not from the date so branded in an open court of law. No courts are bound to uphold it, and no citizens are bound to obey it. It operates as a mere nullity or a fiction of law, which means it doesn't exist in law. Now let me give you an example in today's timing as to how effective this is. This argument is so effective that it literally nullifies the Brady Bill. It nullifies the crime bill that takes away the right of the people to keep and bear arms on these 19 weapons that turn into 159 weapons. It uh, stops this 666 bill that just went through that they're trying to take away the Fourth Amendment. 
you see, because they have no power to pass a law that's in conflict with the United States Constitution, and it's automatically null and void of law from its inception, not from the date you go to court and brand it as unconstitutional. Now, I want to get that real clear. A lot of people think that they got to go to court and brand it unconstitutional. I'm here to tell you, if you know your arguments and you can show your arguments, most of the time you will win. Every now and then you run into a hard nose, but I'll show you how to deal with him too, okay? But for now, I want everybody that's got a chance to go out to learn your Constitution, your Article 6, Paragraph 2 of your Constitution. I want you to, to pay attention to what's going on here. Learn to read about this Marbury versus Madison case. I want to show you, pardon my reach again, this right here is an example of what is called Shepard's Citations. Shepard Citations is a group of reporters that go through and keep track of all the court cases that have come before the courts, especially the Supreme Court. And they clarify before the court all of the cases. Each one of these little numbers here represents somebody hiring a lawyer and going to the Supreme Court. Every one of these. There's nine pages of these folks. Almost 200 years worth that goes against this case, Marbury versus Madison. And I want to tell you, this case is still supreme law of the land. If it wasn't, you would see O's in here where it was overturned, okay? You don't see any O's. There aren't any O's. That means the case is standing. There'd be an O in this column right next to here. You don't see any O's because there's no case that could come up against this case. That's how strong this case is, folks. Now, this is nine pages. Each one, This is two pages each. There's nine pages of this. This represents, if I was to... To, to try and teach you what this represents, if I was building a wall from here to the moon, out of bricks, that's what that would mean in legal terms. Because that's how solid this case is. So it's very important that you understand your Constitution is an ironclad contract in writing enforceable in the court of law. It's very important that you understand Article 6, Paragraph 2, the Supremacy Clause, which says the Constitution and the laws and pursuance thereof and the treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land. The judges in every state shall be bound thereby. Anything in conflict or repugnancy is null and void of law. It bears no power to enforce, no obligation to obey, purports to settle as if it never existed. Unconstitutionality dates from the enactment. No courts are bound to uphold it. No citizens are bound to obey it. Now that is one of the most important lessons that I can teach you on the Constitution so that you can understand how strong this document is. You see. And when I go to the law library and I hit some of these law libraries, it's wall-to-wall -wall books, folks. I mean, it's like I take people down there and their chin's on the ground. And then I tell them there's three floors of this place just like this, filled to the brim with books and books. And did you know that in every one of those cases, this little book right here, this one right here, folks, controls every single book in that law library. Every single one. Every single book in that law library is controlled by this little book. So can you understand how important it is for you to know what's in this little book so that you can effectively call on that kind of a commanding knowledge? Okay? It is absolutely vital that you get a hold of one of these books and start learning it and don't let anybody take away your constitutional rights. You, cannot, you can't even give your constitutional rights away. You have to voluntarily acquiesce by signing a document on a Miranda release form. That's how hard it is to give away your constitutional rights. We don't want you to give away any of your rights. We want you to know these rights backward, forward, upside down, and other. We want you to be able to rattle them off. Our soldiers could do it. And they did it with, with the great love in their heart and the pride and the, and the duty that they hold in their heart. And they swore on a sacred oath that they defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And then they perform their duties to the best of their ability, so help them God. And by God, they do, both in the service and out of the service. Okay? We defend the Constitution to the death. We never surrender. We are soldiers above all. And we love our country and our flag and our Constitution. We are what the, the term is under the... The military code of conduct, I am an American fighting soldier. I serve the forces which guard my country in its constitutional way of government. I am prepared to give my life if necessary in defense of that constitution. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So I want you to pay attention. A lot of brave soldiers have died to pay for this book so that you could have the right. And the least you could do for your own self sake is to learn what's in this book and be able to argue effectively what's in this book. You would be amazed how many times you can win if you just have this book and know what's in it. Okay? Now, that we get that by, we're going to go into some other arguments here. We're going to try and show you how to really effectively use this book. Okay?